Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Before we do our weekly demo shop recap series, I wanted to talk about a stolen guitar collection real quick to raise some awareness for him. This is Robbie Z. He had over 100 guitars stolen from him due to somebody breaking into his storage facility. There is a $10,000 reward for the return of these guitars, and so far they have been successful in getting quite a few of these back. But you can visit their website, stolenguitars.us slash robbiez.htm, in order to look at all these guitars. It's a really sad situation, and this guy had quite a massive collection. I really like the custom color Coronados that he had. Unfortunately, the photos, they're not the best, but I'm sure he was never expecting to have to recover these. He thought they were safe in his storage unit. So you can browse this website to keep your eye open on if you're ever searching for guitars that you don't accidentally buy a stolen one, or you can alert him if you happen to find one of these. Like, they have been finding a few. Like, this Fender Jaguar was recovered in both a black finish and a Sherwood green. And I think he has a fighting chance on the ones that he at least has a photo on and a serial number. Now, as far as the undocumented ones, I say good luck to him. That's why it's always good to have your serial numbers written down somewhere for your own personal collection in case something like this does happen. Because when you post a serial number online, occasionally vintage dealer shops, before they buy something, they'll search it up to make sure it wasn't stolen. So if nothing else, some pro advice for you. But good luck to Robbie, I hope you find these guitars. I'm on the lookout, but honestly, most of these aren't in my general wheelhouse, so I probably won't be the best help, since they're pretty much all vintage vendors. But anyways, onto our main topic today, the Gibson Demo Shop. And we also have some viewer sent in photos of some really cool custom finishers out of the Demo Shop a little later on today. They had a few cool pieces this week, but a lot of it was just, you know, players grade stuff. So there's not a lot to talk about. So as of what is available today in recording this, we have a Les Paul Custom for $36.99. Looks like a Les Paul Classic at $300 off, but nothing that really catches my eye. Until we get to this. Huh? Look at all these other photos. And then now look at this one. Something's not quite right there. And at first I thought, is that a returned guitar? Because if you go back to the old Gibson demo shop, this is how most of these things looked. They use this style of stand, whereas the newer modern day ones, they're using that clear stand. However, in recording this, I'm now realizing that I'm just wrong. It's for these big body shapes like the Flying V and the Explorer. They get that slightly different photo setup. I'm surprised they haven't custom commissioned like a clear acrylic plastic version of that stand because that's just the regular Gibson stand. They run you like 200 bucks. I think it's worth it, but when you have like 5,000 to 20,000 dollar guitars, you know, 200 bucks doesn't seem that much. But if you're rocking an Epiphone that only costs you 500 bucks, I can totally see why 200 bucks just seems out of the ordinary. There's definitely cheaper guitar stands out there, but I like the way they look. They work well for my B-roll shots. But anyways, we might as well take a look at this non-reverse Firebird while we've got it pulled up. So these were actually ridiculously cheap when they were brand new. If I remember correctly, I think they were like $8.99, $9.99. They might have been a dealer exclusive, but you can occasionally pick these up very cheap on the used market. So if you thought their price was good, just wait till you find one on the used market at a good value. Because they're wanting $1,400, which might not seem that bad but they're just pricing it in comparison to the other ones that are on the market today. And as you can see, they've had a whole boatload of these things, ranging anywhere between 1,000 to 1,400 bucks. So they definitely have a history of selling these, but here's what you can kind of see what I was talking about. A couple of years ago, you could get them pretty cheap, but this is one of those models that just kind of appreciated in value. But as far as the rest of these players' models go, I did pick out four of them I want to talk about. Starting with this Gibson Les Paul Tribute. So when I first looked at this, it's like, okay, it's not that good of a deal. I think it's like 200 bucks off brand new. The wood grain figuring is kind of nice on the top. It's not traditional, but I love playing tops when they've got the big rings on them. But the real treat on this budget level Gibson is the back. Oh, that's nice. Usually you find those on like the higher end standards. So to see that here is really cool. If only the neck would have been like heavily figured. That would have been pretty cool because it is a maple neck. Occasionally you can find them heavily figured when they're not supposed to be. That back is just a really nice touch and the fact that this one actually has a discount and it does appear there's some figuring in the maple neck. Sometimes these look a lot cooler in person. But you've got the faux binding effect by just exposing the maple cap on the side. It's actually, you know, a pretty nice looking guitar. I would suggest purchasing that one at a thousand bucks just for that figuring on the back. 
And then we had an Abilene Sunset 1956 Les Paul reissue. Something just doesn't look right about this finish. Like it couldn't decide if it wanted to be a fade finish, a rim burst, or a regular burst. It's, it's just kind of strange. I wonder if that's why it ended up in here. But it's kind of a nice color, very plain top. But then again, in 1956, generally you would have a gold top. So we were looking at like a refinish type job here. That's not what this one is. It's just 56 specs with a custom color. And this one's got pretty nice figuring on the back as well. Not quite as crazy, and you get that really deep, heavy wood grain on the neck. $36.99 doesn't seem too bad for a reissue-styled guitar. And this one I just wanted to share because the title's kind of funny. Gibson Les Paul Jr. Single Coil. <laughs> you mean a Les Paul special? That, that's just how the Henry J era was. There were some very confusingly named things out there, and this is one of those models. Another one that always comes to my head is the Classic Customs and the Custom Classics. Very easy to get those confused. And then sometimes Juniors being special specced like this. But now where the real fun begins is the custom colors and the other ones that have already sold. So this one, Gibson. <laughs> Are you serious here? Should we really be calling we strip the finish off the top of the guitar an exclusive custom finish? <laughs> Reclaimed natural. I just had a chuckle on this one because that, that's really all they did. This started life likely as a black one. They just took the finish off the top and called it a custom color. <laughs> it's just a clear coat. But this thing sold surprisingly fast for $1,299. But to be fair, it does look kind of cool. The black back would really pop in person when you can see that kind of smoky natural top and the back at the same time. But you could also go over here and get one that still has the top finish for the exact same price. So it's not like they were asking a premium for it. Just enough to make it worth their time to take the finish off the front. But the true Mac Daddy of custom colors this week fell within the Gibson Flying V. With an interestingly titled, Good Gray Finish. You know, I really appreciate that finish tile because when I look at this I think, yeah, that's a, that's a good gray color. It's, it's not fantastic, it's not something I would custom order, but it's good. So why not call it good gray? Maybe it's actually a reference to something else, but I really like this super rosy fretboard on this one. And then contrast it to this one, kind of reminds me of the Government Series guitars. But if you take a close look at this one, you might think, oh, is that one of the 70s Flying V reissues? Well, not reissue, just the general basic model. That's 1999. And this one was 1899. You could get it at a $100 discount. No, this is one of those older 70s style flying Vs. That was the Japan exclusive. We've talked about them before in this series. It gets the more rounded overhead stock, which is, I think, just a, a little bit too short on these. I think that's why they look a bit goofy. And it gets the proper style volute. But kind of a cool satin gray finish. I liked it. It was definitely a fair value at $18.99. And unfortunately, I wasn't around on Tuesday, so I missed out on this kind of cool thing. Now, granted, I probably wouldn't have purchased it, but it was kind of cool to see that, yes, the demo shop's listening to my kill switch all the things suggestion. <laughs> they put a buckethead style kill switch on this SG Faded. Yeah, they threw on a Bigsby for good measure too, swapped out our knobs. They probably actually replaced the pickups on this one as well, or at least put pickup covers on it, because this model likely came stock with uncover pickups if I remember correctly. So yeah, if you wanted a kill switch properly installed on a guitar, not, not the worst deal in the world, but I probably wouldn't have wanted to have reviewed this piece anyways. It's just not too much special to talk about in terms of finish and the general grade of the guitar. But it was $11.99 and I'm sure it got sold pretty fast. But yes, Demo Shop, put more kill switches on more things. <laughs> it's fun. Other than that, we did have a lefty Graysar presence in an SG Junior format. Pretty decent deal on one of these TV Yellow specials. Another Firebird, we've got one of those green classics, Les Paul Custom. But I just have two more I want to show you tonight before we take a look at those viewer submitted photos. Okay, I lied, maybe there's four. <laughs> so this Blueberry Burst, hands down the best one I think I've ever seen. That is a top. Why is it in the demo shop? I have no clue. I mean, you, you gotta understand. Most of them look like this. 
there's like hardly any flame to them at all. I mean, this one's not a bad example either, but most of these are not terrific. This thing is just explosive. And at $15.99, a $400 discount, why not? The SG Moderns, I actually really enjoy them. This thing I wanted to show you real quick because the Manhattan Midnight finish, you don't see it too often. I mean, here's one from 2015. Generally, they would have these like cream colored plastics, like slightly pink. Yeah, it's an acquired taste. But this one, they decided to black it out and give it like the aged nickel pickup covers. It's kind of interesting. I mean, 2015 specs, so you gotta like that to love this one. But it's sold at $11.99. This one, kind of an interesting top. Very sand-like waviness to it. But then you get a little bit of ringage over here. I can dig that. But what was interesting is the pickups. P94 pickups. Which means it's a P90 in the shape of a hamburger. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why? <laughs> who, who did that? I'm sorry, I don't agree with your choice of putting Les Paul Jr. style tuners on here with the white buttons. Leave the regular Clusens alone on a 50s standard. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess I can understand it since they had P90 pickups in here. They were just basically trying to make it like a souped up Les Paul special that had a full body width, maple top, the binding and all that. But I'd personally be changing those back. And then this one. It's just nice. I don't have much else to say besides that is just a beautiful top. It matches really well with the finish. What's our back look like? Ooh, nice. Even figured back there too. That's just a solid pickup for somebody who wanted a really nice looking 335. So that wraps up this week. But one thing I do want to point out is we've got the Explorer custom here. We've got the Firebird custom. And up here we've got the SG custom. I really thought this week they were going to list the fourth one, the Flying V custom, but unfortunately, no. I can't remember, did they list that one before all these other ones? It's just kind of cool that you could get a complete set out of the demo shop. But anyways, the happy new owner of the 335 Flame that took a while to sell did send in a photo and oh my goodness, this thing looks fantastic fantastic in regular lighting conditions you know not in the stock photography style i didn't realize that they had done the design on the edge of the instrument as well and the gloss ebony with these like light blue flames this really looks incredibly better than it ever did in those other photos so despite this guitar getting some hate in the comments section it didn't deter him from buying it and i that really is fantastic I think on some of these more unique custom colors, Gibson should take them outside, do some regular photo shoots of them, because sometimes fluorescent lighting just doesn't do it for guitars. It's just easier and more predictable to take lots of photos this way. But I think for the special pieces, they should take a bit more time. I bet they could even get another 100 or 200 bucks out of them to make it worth their time. But next up, Ray purchased the Midnight Pelham Blue finish. And this one looks about exactly what I was expecting. Just a really dark, dull Pelham Blue. But I think it really comes to life outside. You can really just see how dark and midnight influenced this thing is. I think it's a pretty cool finish all in all. So that was a solid pickup here. He did tell me that the paint job looked a little bit rushed and there was that dreaded paint step off where the fretboard meets the neck. You know, we're talking this area right here. You can clearly see that in the photo. It's a little bit uncomfortable to play guitars like that, but it got me thinking, are they actually taking the finish off underneath these or are they just spraying them over real quick? That'd be nice to know because you could buy this custom color and as you play this guitar, you might get like that original sunburst finish starting to show through, you know, kind of like Fender style. You can check out any of my Fender Relic reviews or like my Painted Over Les Paul series review. It'd be kind of interesting. Only time will tell on that. And the last one. Yep, I regret not buying it. Thank you, Jonathan, for sending this one in. Oh, man. I, I've got no words. I should have bought it. This was what, 5,000 bucks? This is easily, easily a $6,500 guitar. I mean, look at that. I think I called it Galaxy Burst or something, and that's exactly what that looks like. It's got the blues, it's got the purples. There's like even a little bit of like a swirl to it. That's why it reminds me of like a Galaxy type thing. This is a beautiful piece. Congratulations on this pickup, and I hope you enjoy it for many years. 
because that is a stunning finish that I think Gibson should just bring out as a regular production color. Well, maybe not regular production, but like do a small run of it. That one was cool enough. It's got like a, a foil vibe to it. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning into the Demo Shop recap this week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.